Um, <clears throat> good morning. Um, great. Um, thank you very much, um, Ben, for that nice um, introduction. And it's, it's an honor to be here with you this morning to talk about some of the challenges uh, related to um, security, not only in Africa, but as a uh, really um, from a cross border perspective as well. Um, I'm happy to be here with my good friend, um, Will Wexler, um, who together um, for many years we developed some of the thinking on how to combat transnational organized um, crime and related threat networks. Um, I would like to thank the um, African Center for Strategic Studies uh, for their invitation and really for their leadership in developing, I think, the critical partnerships uh, with our African partners. Um, as someone who studied um, at the U.S. War College, I really cherish the opportunities to come here to NDU and other war colleges to, to really learn from you as well and engage in these um, peer-based learning um, seminars. Um, and as you continue to think, assess, and evaluate the transnational security environment and how we can partner together with the international community on developing, I think, more robust responses to um, a series of threats. Um, can can they load up my um, PowerPoint, please? I don't think it's up. Put that one to the right. This one? Yeah, right there. Oh, here we go. All right. Um, so, no doubt, you've been um, listening to a lot of my colleagues um, during the first week about um, security issues and really, again, developing the partnership. And certainly the State Department um, is similarly committed to strengthen our international cooperation and support of our law enforcement security agencies um, to build the capacities of our allies and partners um, in Africa to disrupt and dismantle transnational criminal networks. Um, today's reality is one in which we live in a world where there is no region, no country, um, no community that remains untouched by the destabilizing effects and corruptive influence of transnational organized crime and violent terrorism. And their impact is truly global, and the, re the real threat centers, in some cases, in their convergence. In particular, we must recognize that transnational regional illicit trafficking of drugs, arms, humans, and other illicit trade goods and services are fueling greater insecurity and instability across Africa and in other parts of the world. While the world's attention has in recent months been focused on the conflicts in Syria and Afghanistan, or the efforts by North Korea and others in the weaponization of nuclear missiles, the threats posed by transnational organized criminals remain very real in the United States, Latin America, Africa, and globally. And this is especially true as it relates to the increasing links between cross-border narcotics trafficking and other forms of transnational organized crime across Africa that impair not only the rule of law, economic development, um, efforts to promote trade and investment, but helps, again, to feel that greater insecurity and instability. In fact, according to General Thomas uh, Waldhauser uh, from AFRICOM, um, parts of, the, uh, of Africa remain a battleground between ideologues, um, ideologies, interests, and values, where prosperity and peace are often pitted against extremism, oppression, and conflict. The, strate the strategic environment includes instability that allows violent extremist organizations to grow and recruit disenfranchised populations. Colleagues, this um, strategic environment also includes uh, issues related to the webs of corruption and cross-border cr criminality and relating converging threats. Convergence. Convergence is um, um, an issue that I tend to talk a lot about um, in, in a lot of these um, seminars and internationally, and because I, I encourage you to view the global threat environment through a prism of convergence crime. Because the reality on the ground is that we can no longer simply focus on one component of a threat. In the world of converging threats, where various threats collide to form a more potent mix of insecurity globally, each is individually dangerous, but whose sum represents a far greater threat across borders. Thus, we need to see the threat environment more holistically. For example, corruption and complicit facilitators enable the illicit space for criminals and terrorist groups alike to thrive and to exploit the weaknesses in our borders and institutions that imperil our security. And 
because illicit trade operates in the shadow of the global economy, increasingly sophisticated traffickers are diversifying their portfolios in everything from narcotics, people, arms, wildlife to counterfeits, including fake medicines and illicit tobacco and alcohol goods. On the governance front, the proceeds of drug trafficking and other forms of illicit trafficking are fueling a dramatic increase in corruption among the very institution responsible for fighting crime. The collusion and complexity of some government officials with criminal networks have helped to carve out an illicit trafficking corridor that stretches from West Africa coast to the Horn of Africa, from North Africa south to the Gulf of Guinea. Through these illicit trafficking routes, criminals and terrorists alike are moving people and products from the coca and opium people poppy fields of Colombia and Southeast Asia to the coast of West Africa and the hashish plantations, drug cartels and other criminal networks are navigating an illicit superhighway that creates greater markets and imperils our collective security. They employ the latest technological advances and use commercial jets, fishing vessels, and container ships to move these illicit commodities. This is um, a slide. Um, it was recently um, some data released by the Global fin Financial Integrity, and, uh, which, in, with other international organizations, contains really um, some of the values, some of the um, illicit um, markets, and, and, and uh, as you can see, uh, from tens of billions um, on issues like human trafficking um, and uh, wildlife trafficking to the counterfeiting and drug trafficking where it's more in the hundreds of billions. Um, this is to demonstrate that in the global illicit environment, uh, the illegal um, markets are, are booming with tremendous uh, resources. Um, how massive are these process, uh, profits? Well, again, when you start to, to see, especially from a cross-border perspective, um, these um, illicit profits began to destabilize the environment for partner countries to work together on combating not only organized crime, but other threat networks. At a time when many are her heralding the rise of some of the world fastest growing eco economies in Sub-Saharan Africa, these criminal entrepreneurs are undermining that economic development and growth by financing um, illicit markets um, and really, again, undermining the potential of these um, uh, various um, countries. Cocaine trafficking remains among the most lucrative um, illicit activities. In April 2017, the UNODC reported that, that developing markets are fueling the resurgence of cocaine trafficking through West Africa. UNODC further added that seizures, seizures on the Atlantic island of Cabo Verde in the Gambia, Nigeria, and Ghana have contributed to a 78% increase in cocaine seizures from 2000. 9 to 2014 compared to the previous reporting um, period. Um, smugglers and traffickers who intake the cocaine from the Americas will typically transport these drugs in contraband over the Sahel and North Africa before crossing into destination markets in Europe, uh, the Middle East, and Southeast Asia. It is true that West Africa has also become a transit point for heroin destined for the United States. So illicit markets are growing across Africa to meet the global um, demand for arms, counterfeit cigarettes, um, diamonds, natural resources, and other illicit commodities. A convergence of actors is further paving this corridor of illicit trafficking and, and crime to continuing. Because it is so profitable, it makes it easier for a lot of these threat networks to really tap into this wealth um, of um, illicit um, profit to finance not only their criminal activities, but to terror campaigns as well. Uh, we only have to look um, at some of the current regional hotspots to clearly comprehend how certain crime terror dynamics continue to contribute to insecurity and instability. Today, this thriving illegal economy is so lucrative that even terrorists are beginning to tap into this illicit wealth. In Mali, as drugs are trafficked through the country, the Sahel and the Maghreb, AQIM and its sympathizers are manipulated socioeconomic conditions to further advance an illegal economy that allows them to tax the drugs through their territory. In Libya, 
AQIM and ISIS are attempting to not only forge alliances with other violent extreme net networks, but are also involved in smuggling and trafficking in persons, um, partnering with other organized criminal networks to exploit a currency black market and the regular migration of, of people across your borders. Um, Nigerian organized criminal networks remain a major uh, player in moving cocaine and heroin worldwide. Uh, widespread corruption in Nigeria further facilitates uh, criminal activity and combined with Nigerian central location along the major uh, trafficking routes enable criminal networks to flourish and make Nigeria an important trafficking hub. Um, I, I was asked to um, provide some of the data that we have um, been working with various international partners, including um, UNODC, the World Customs Organization, Interpol, Europol, and data that we also work with the partner African nations. Um, <clears throat> earlier, you saw more of this global landscape of illicit markets, and again, they, they also reflect some of the other numbers that I showed from the global financial industries. But here, again, what happens in Africa also impacts other regions. And again, there from wildlife trafficking to um, counterfeitings, it's, it's a very profitable enterprise for a lot of criminal organizations, which again, makes it easier to gravitate to finance further their illicit activities. Um, as many of you know, the State Department has been partnering with um, the International Committee on Combating um, Wildlife Trafficking. And the reason for that is just um, the gravity of the situation um, as it relates to um, endangered elephants, uh, endangered rhinos, and really the, the level of poaching of, of these endangered and, and other um, wildlife. It's very alarming and uh, it's just not very sustainable either. But again, this is an area where it's a high reward, low risk for, for various criminals to, to gravitate to. And, um, uh, earlier, um, it was mentioned that you uh, have been talking about maritime security. Maritime security is something that the Department of State um, is, is very concerned about as well. Uh, we have been working with the uh, economic um, communities of West Africa and Central African states the Gulf of, of Guinea Commission and their member states um, to really work together to implement the 2013 Uanda Summit um, communique. Um, we have been partnering with the African um, Center for Strategic Studies to be able to address not only the threats, but to work together in developing uh, the resiliency and the partnerships um, to um, combat some of these um, threats. Um, I just wanted to highlight a little bit um, some of the, um, again, the global um, threat environment because it's all interconnected. Again, what happens in Africa impacts not only the United States, but other partners in different parts of the world. Um, as we see here on the issue of counterfeits, uh, which is increasingly becoming an area of concern as well um, in Africa. Now, um, having just briefly laid um, some of the um, illicit uh, threat environment in Africa and globally, I do want to um, spend some time and talking about how the State Department, especially my office, uh, the Bureau for International Narcotics, works with other um, partners to implement not only um, President uh, Trump's new executive order on transnational criminal organization, but really to develop the capacities to disrupt, dismantle um, transnational illicit networks and really break the corruptive power of transnational criminal networks and attack their financial underpinnings to strip um, these bad actors and networks of their illicit wealth um, and their access to the financial system. And Earlier I, I did show the um, <clears throat> Really, uh, some of the areas that the executive order empowers um, the law enforcement agencies um, to work. And again, um, as you saw in the global financial um, chart and s some of the illicit areas um, in the OECD, and uh, these are priorities as we continue to work uh, to develop the full spectrum capabilities of partnering with our African partners on combating the convergence crime and, and the related corruption. And um, I do want to um, share a little bit more of our, our specific uh, programming in INL um, in many of your countries um, to really develop, I think, um, the type of 
capabilities to not only combat corruption, uh, but organized crime and related uh, threat areas, including um, terrorism. Um, INL training efforts help countries build the effect of uh, rule of law institutions, strengthening criminal justice systems and strengthening their police, courts, and anti-crime efforts, everything from anti-corruption, money laundering, cybercrime, and intellectual property theft, to trafficking in goods, people, weapons, drugs, and endangered wildlife. I announced some program in, in Africa, again, um, develops the ability um, to secure greater peace and, 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 and security for our African partners and for the international community. And, and we continue to support post-conflict stabilization operations and to strengthen um, security sector reform. And, uh, let me highlight a couple of um, examples of our specific bilateral INL projects. Um, across the um, continent, we work with the U.S. Department of Justice and, and their prosecutors who are embedded with our embassies to support justice sector development and capacity building, including in places like Nigeria, Benin, Senegal, Niger, Mali, Mauritania, Mozambique, and many others. In, in Kenya, we're working with the National Police Service um, and the Anti-Corruption Commission investigators to investigate and prosecute high-level and government-wide um, corruption, including as it relates to wildlife trafficking. In Tanzania, we continue to enhance the criminal justice system to success, successfully prosecute environmental crime. And, in Benin, we continue to work with our partners, including, including um, to, to train uh, the foreign police units and the anti-drug um, offices to counter um, narcotics and related organized crime. In Ghana, uh, we have created uh, with our partners um, in Ghana a kind of narcotics unit, um, including to strengthen the capabilities of the SWAT units um, to combat um, organized crime. Um, Nigeria, uh, we continue to support the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency and Justice um, to be able to monitor uh, some of these uh, drug cartels um, and organized criminals um, who are combating, uh, who are contributing to the illicit markets in West Africa and across um, the region. And, uh, regionally, we continue to support the interagency uh, inter efforts uh, related to the West Africa Regional Security Initiative. Uh, we continue to work across the interagency inter to support the Trans-Sahara Counter Counterism Partnership. Um, INL's programming um, helps again to um, strengthen the capacities of our partners to target um, terrorist groups um, and strengthen border secu security across the region. And, uh, we are also um, supporting the Security Governance Initiative, uh, which is a multi-year effort between the United States and partner countries to improve security sector governance and capacities to address uh, various threats. And we are partnering uh, with the Department of Justice, Homeland Security, uh, the National Counterism Center to again strengthen uh, these areas. I mentioned, uh, thank you very much, uh, wildlife trafficking. Again, this is a very important area, and we encourage um, our partners in Africa to work with the United States and the international community to not only address the issue of poaching, uh, poaching but cross-border um, illicit trafficking. Do a lot of you have, have, who has participated in our programs at the Aguilla Gabra? If you can raise your hand. So this is a center that INL supports um, to be able to um, deliver uh, different law enforcement courses on issues, again, to um, not only on, on counterterrorism, counter-narcotics operation, but across um, various anti-crime areas. Uh, we also have a, a smaller network in West Africa, um, in Ghana, uh, the West Africa Regional Training Center, where we create the type of relationships um, to be able to, again, ad address cross-border uh, security and, and, and criminal um, threats. Uh, let me leave you with a, a couple of final points. Um, again, I, on behalf of the State Department, um, very much appreciate our partnership with our African um, colleagues to, to be able to, again, defeat our common adversaries. I think it's important to leverage all national economic intelligence and diplomatic um, tools um, to make it riskier, harder, and costlier for threat networks to do business within Africa and externally. And 
Um, we must crack down on corruption at all levels and cut off the ability of klep kleptocrats, criminals, and terrorists to enjoy the fruits of their illicit enterprise that enable the financial capacity to execute their operations. Um, we must take a holistic approach in addition to anti-crime law enforcement and counter uh, security. It's also important to be honest and, and address the underlying cause causes that are contributing to today's conflicts and insecurity in Africa. Uh, issues of food and water security, poverty, economic in integration and development, and other socioeconomic areas that empower communities to nurture growth markets, investment frontiers, and resiliency. And uh, we can only tackle these threats effectively if we work together and jointly synchronize our, our, our full spectrum capabilities and capacities. We must stay connected and continue to harness our network of networks at every level local, regional, global, to win our fight against convergence crime. If we do this, we can create hope, stability, opportunity, and enduring peace for all of us. Thank you.